Well, hello scrappers. Welcome back to my channel. In part one, we ran a lot of stuff, 25, 30 pounds of stuff with gold plating on it through the Eco Gold X Gold Stripper. I've got the pregnant solution in here. I ran stuff through it until it wouldn't take off any more gold plating. So this is saturated with gold. So now we need to get the gold back out of the solution. And there's a lot of steps in that process. That's why I split this video into two parts. Getting the gold in the solution is one part. Getting the gold out is going to be part two here. And there's a lot of parts to this. This video is probably going to be about as long as the first one. So anyway, um, there's a fair amount of gold in here. And the first step, according to Eco Gold X, in getting the gold back out of solution is we have to filter this. They're very clear on that, that, that the, the liquid needs to be filtered. Now when we first mix this stuff up, I just let it settle over time and siphon the clear liquid off the top and use that. But they're very clear, this needs to be filtered. And it is kind of muddy and opaque-ish and nasty. It's not, not nearly the, the clear liquid that, that we started off with. It's gotten a lot darker and there's some stuff suspended in it. So I'll get set up to do the filtration here shortly. I'll give you a look at the liquid though first as it is. Yeah, it's kind of ugly looking stuff. It's not near as clear as it was. I could just barely see some stuff on the bottom that, that made it through the basket and fell to the bottom. So filter that out, plus filter out whatever solids are suspended in the liquid. So I'm going to have to do this in several batches. I will set up my vacuum filtration system and put this through my Buckner funnel with a nice uh, filter in it. And uh, probably have to do this in probably three batches because my... Um, filtration flask is only two liters in size. So I will get all set up for that and then we'll be back to filter this. Okay, we're ready for filtration. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to vacuum filter it just because it's quicker. And I've got a lot to do today so i got to get this done. I'm uh, probably going to have to do it in three batches because my filter flask only holds about two liters and there's used to be six liters in here although I can tell the level's down some. So I'm going to siphon the liquid out of here into the, into the Buckner funnel. I've got a filter in the Buckner funnel. Just because this is so heavy and awkward and not easy to pour, I don't want to splash or slosh or splatter that pregnant gold liquid all over the place. So I'm going to siphon the bulk of it out of here into the Buckner funnel. And then once I get down and get the level down to something more manageable, I'll just pour the rest of it in. That'll probably be the last batch. So let me get uh, the vacuum pump going. Get some uh, water in this hose. There we go, and we're siphoning. And we're filtering. And it's going through the filter about as fast as it's coming into the uh, into the funnel, so that's good. So this is just going to take a little while. This may only take I don't know. It's hard to say. It may only take two uh, two runs. I think as well as carry over into the rinse water, I think there's been some significant evaporation too since I had this stuff hot for like two days, the better part of two days. So the volume of the liquid's down. There may only be about four liters left. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to stop and let what's the filtration has slowed down. I'm going to stop and let what's uh, in the Buckner funnel go through. Get the pregnant solution out of the hose here, too. I don't want to overfill the flask down there, so... And then what's left in here... I don't know. Maybe I'll siphon some more. I was going to say, if I'm really careful, maybe I can pour that in. But, you know, I don't want to have an accident. Put a lot of effort into this stuff so far. I don't want the, the pregnant liquid all over the floor, you know? Yeah, filtering's going a little slow. Um, the liquid sure looks like it has cleared up overnight. Stuff has settled out all over the bottom of the pot. 
but uh, there's still something in it that's clogging up the filter. This is taking a little while. So I think what's left, what's, when what's in the Buckner funnel still finally makes it through, I will uh, dump this into this clean bucket here and then continue with the filtering and then once I have it all filtered I'll dump it back into the stainless steel pot and we'll go on with further processing. Well I don't know how I did that but uh, it's almost exactly two liters once it all came through the funnel so that's good. lose any of that liquid. Pour this into the white bucket. And then filter the rest of it. It's going to take a little while because the filter is a little bit plugged now, but oh well. I got time. I'll make you watch it. I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, while well, the last little bit of liquid's getting pulled through the filter, I thought I'd give you a, a look at what's being caught on the filter. There's a lot of little bits that made it through the basket. I ran a bunch of uh, gold pins. Um, they're, they're fairly big gold pins. Um, they wouldn't go through the basket uh, uh, mesh very well, but there were obviously a lot of smaller pins mixed in that did go through and wound up in the bottom of the pot. There's uh, just a lot of general sludge and dirt and grime there, and whatever was suspended in the liquid making it so cloudy. So that's all filtered out. Got a nice clear filtrate down there. Um, looks like we only got about four liters of filtrate, um, so we lost two liters somewhere in the process. I know some of it was carried over into the rinse bucket, but um, the level of liquid in the rinse bucket really didn't go up very much, so I don't think I got two liters of liquid in there. I think a lot of it's just evaporation from working out here. Having the liquid hot for a better part of two days and a fan blowing on me because it's hot out here, I think we just evaporated off a lot of the liquid. So we started off with six liters, we got four liters to drop gold out of, and we'll see how much gold we get. Okay, all the liquid's been filtered. It's all back in the stainless steel pot. Now, the first batch of Eco Goldex I got recommended doing all the next steps at at least a temperature of 40 degrees C. The current instructions I have don't say anything about heating the liquid above ambient. So, you know, when I first developed this process, I was doing it in stainless steel pots, always on the on the heat to keep it hot. So. Like I say, the current instructions don't say anything about warming the liquid for all these subsequent stages. I may warm it up a little bit, I may not. I mean, it's getting towards midday here in Florida in early autumn. The liquid's almost 30 degrees C just as it is. So, I mean, if you live in a cooler climate, you may want to warm it up a little bit because most chemical reactions, of course, work much better when it's warmer. Now, we're going to have to adjust the pH of this stuff. It's still very caustic. I'll get the pH strips out and show you here in a little bit. But we're going to mix up a 20% solution of sulfuric acid to uh, adjust the pH on this. So I'm going to put 400 milliliters of distilled water in this beaker. Put 100 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid in this beaker. I'm going to slowly and carefully mix them, slowly with a lot of stirring. Otherwise, you can have boiling and spattering, which is not good. I'll put about half this acid in. Oh yeah, I got good and hot. I just don't want it to uh, get to the point where it starts boiling and spattering and exploding all over me, you know? Remember, 
your uh, chemistry 101, add acids to water, don't add water to acids. The reaction of adding acid to water is violent enough. You add water to acids, you're going to have problems. Okay, Let's get the rest of this acid out of here. Clean the beaker. Okay. So there's our 20% solution. Oh, so that is very, very, very hot now. There's our 20% solution that we're going to use to adjust the pH on this. So Eco Goldex says the pH needs to be adjusted down from whatever it is, and I'll show you that, down to between 1 and 4. So I'm going to shoot for like two and a half, three, and see how close we can get. Now the instructions do say that this pH adjustment step needs to be carried out in an open area with good ventilation. I don't know if that's just in case, which we talked about earlier, if you drop the pH too fast, too far, it might evolve cyanide, or it does evolve some sort of gas, but I think it's probably carbon dioxide, not 100% certain. Doesn't really have an odor to it. Um, is it nasty? But maybe if it builds up in an enclosed space, it could be a problem. Anyway, let's get a first look at the, the pH of this stuff and see where we are. Oh yeah, I would say we are somewhere just north of 10. It was probably 13 or closer to 14 when we started, but uh, I, hope that's, I hope that's showing up. Yeah, so we're probably somewhere a little north of 10. Okay, here you go. Now you've got sort of the Julia Child uh, cooking angle on what's going on here. Let me uh, get this swirling around a little bit more. Add some more acid to it. See, oh, see how it foams. Oh, doesn't it foam? And I'll tell you what, as you bring the pH down, each addition of acid is even foamier. So you gotta be really careful with how much you dump in at a time. Otherwise, you could have a bubble over. And you don't want to bubble over. You don't want all this lovely, pregnant, gold-infused liquid bubbling over all over your workbench. And put a little more in. There we go. And stir it really good, or you can have sort of areas of high pH and areas of low pH. And when you go to measure it, don't measure the foam. Measure the liquid, because the foam can be either high or low compared to the liquid. You want to measure the bulk of the liquid. Make sure it's all stirred up good and you measure the bulk of the liquid. All right. So I have used eh, not quite half of my acid. Let me put another shot in and then we'll check the pH on it and see, see what we're doing here. All right, let the foam settle, get it good and stirred up, and we'll check the pH. Stir this around a little bit. Alright, stick this in a place where there's some um, liquid and not get the foam. Ah, now there's a change. Yeah, we're somewhere between 10 and 9, so that is not a big change. Not a big change yet. So, this is going to take a little while. I may even need to mix up s some more acid. This may not be enough. But uh, we're definitely starting to bring the pH down. So let me keep this up. And I will put the rest of this acid in because I've only used about half of it. And we'll see what the pH is. And I may need to mix up some more. Oh yeah, boy, that's foamy. It'll take a while for that head to die down. And just keep measuring the pH until we get down to my target of between two and three. Two and a half to three. Gonna take a while with this much liquid.
But uh, I'll be back when we get close. I think I may have said earlier that uh, the closer you get to the target pH, the worse the foaming is with each addition of acid. Yeah. It's getting pretty bad. So I'm going to just test the pH again. I've still got, I don't know, around 100 milliliters of the original uh, the original beaker of acid here. I may still need to um, mix up more, but uh, I would say we've probably made a significant change in the pH based on how much foaming is going on right now. Well, let me uh, let me beat this foam head down a little bit and then uh, measure the pH again. Okay, notice how much lighter in color the liquid is too. It was a it was a dark syrupy red before. Now it's a sort of light yellow orange. Well, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, we are right about at seven. We're just about neutral. So. Now we're headed into acid territory with each addition. It's getting close. Yep, here comes the foam. Alright, so it's just a matter of continuing to do this until we get down to our target pH. Well, I used up all of my first batch of acid, and I'm on the second batch, and I'll tell you what, it's getting so foamy with each addition of acid now, it takes a long time for this head to die down, and it's getting so close to boiling over that I'm having to add it in small increments. So, this is quite the slow process. Set aside some time for this. Even on my small scale tests, it took a while to, uh, you know, get the get the pH right. Now we're somewhere uh, south of seven now, but still still pretty high. I'm going to put in another addition of acid. Yeah, look at that. Look at the foam. I came close to bubbling over on one addition because I put in too much. I mean, it's just like solid foam right now. So we're just going to have to wait for this to uh, die down and then I'll, I'll test the pH of the liquid again. It's going to take a while though. Okay, I think we are there pH-wise and I've used... Oh, about about two thirds of my second batch of uh, of sulfuric acid mix. Now, one thing they don't mention in the instructions that has dogged me from day one using Eco Goldex is a strange precipitate that forms while I'm adjusting the pH. If I let this sit for a little while, you'll see that a sort of whitish, curdish stuff will sink to the bottom and an orangish liquid will uh, will accumulate near the top. So we get some sort of precipitate going on. I haven't even added the zinc yet. Let's check the pH. I would say that is between three and two. So I'm calling that two and a half. That's pretty good. So now it's time to add the zinc. Yeah, I don't know what that precipitate is, but I can already see it settling. There's a there's a layer of uh, clear liquid about that thick over the top of it is it's slowly settling down. And like I say, this precipitate issue has been dogging me from day one. I suspect it's some sort of metallic, insoluble metallic salt that's formed once the uh, pH is adjusted. Now it happens to me whether I'm using the um, hydrochloric or muriatic acid, it happens to me whether I am using the sulfuric acid, so I don't know, it could be a tin salt, it could be silver, it could be silver sulfate I suppose, um, 
Maybe it's silver chloride when I use hydrogen chloride. I, I don't know. It's it's weird. But we've got the uh, the pH where it needs to be. Okay, time to add some zinc. Now, in the Eco Goldex instructions, it really doesn't say anything about how much zinc you need to add to get your gold back. The whole issue of how much zinc is kind of clear as mud. But in their promotional videos, where they show people using this stuff, it seems to me like they are using a wildly excessive amount of zinc. I mean, I'm thinking there's five, maybe six grams of gold tops in that liquid. So why would I need a whole lot more zinc than that to get the gold out? But after using this stuff for a few years and thinking long and hard about what goes on, I'm thinking that the zinc um, has a couple of different functions. Not only does it provide a more reactive metal for the uh, gold to cement out on, I think it, one of its functions is to use up a lot of the acid that I have put in in that pot and bring the pH back up. And for that you need an excess amount of zinc beyond what you need to just cement out the gold. So. When I first started using this Eco Gold X, I would put in about as much zinc as I thought I was going to get gold out. But these days I do it a little different. I'm going to put in quite a bit of excess zinc. I like to get it up to about, with this much material, right about 30 grams of zinc. Close. And uh, that's what I'm going to use. I have found if you don't use enough zinc, um, the pH does not rise up again after the cementation. And Eco Goldex says the pH should rise up again, and it needs to be adjusted back down for the next cementation. But if you don't use enough zinc, that doesn't happen. And I'm thinking that the zinc is also there to increase the uh, is also there to use up some of the acid and uh, de increase the pH of the solution that way. So we're going to go with about 30 grams, a little under, for this cementation and future ones as well. In case you're not aware, Eco Gold X says you'll get maybe 45% of the gold out with each cementation. So this is just the first of several. Oh, and I forgot to warn you, it bubbles. It bubbles a lot when you put the zinc in. Sometimes it wants to bubble over. So I'm going to stir this really, really well to make sure the zinc doesn't clump up. Hopefully it's not going to bubble up so much that it's going to bubble over. I don't think it will sure the zinc's not clumped up, it's all spread through the liquid, it has a chance for cementing out as much gold as possible. This is why I like zinc powder because it's got a lot more surface area than the strips do. And you know to get the amount of surface area you need to cement out the um, all the gold you're gonna have to add a lot of zinc strips to this and then you're gonna have to dissolve a lot of zinc with a lot of acid and it's just, I think the powder works much better. Though someday I should do a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, the bubbling is subsiding. It's good. So what I like to do at this stage, Eco Goldex says it's going to take about you know four hours or so for the zinc to settle and I believe it because the, the water the liquids very gassy right now it's just full of gas and it's gonna buoy up those small particles of zinc and small particles of gold that are forming on the zinc it's gonna take a long time for that to settle um, I may even let this sit overnight and come back and work on it tomorrow even though it's only early afternoon I got a couple other things to do and you know, in four hours it's going to be late. i got to cook dinner. So I may just let this sit until tomorrow. 
That'll also give a chance for this thing to st the stuff degas a little bit. Then it's easier to handle when it's not so gassy. The zinc will sink to the bottom. And I could do my usual trick of siphoning the liquid off the top and leaving uh, the solids in the bottom and then I just have to filter the solids left at the bottom out. But what I will probably do, since I'm probably going to leave this until tomorrow, I may just come out and stir it a couple more times just to make sure that the zinc gets mixed in through the bulk of the liquid and has as much opportunity as possible to cement out the gold. So, I'm just going to cover this up and leave it for now. I'll give you a look at it later and see what it looks like. So here it is. It's been a few hours. Um, it's all settled down pretty well. It looks like there's a little scum of zinc floating on the surface. But uh, most of it has sunk to the bottom, it looks like, along with whatever that uh, white precipitate is. Probably silver sulfate, I would imagine. So it's getting late in the afternoon. i got to start cooking dinner shortly. So tomorrow morning what I'll do is I'll come out and um, siphon off the bulk of the liquid and then get the, the solids in the bottom into a filter. And then we'll do another pH adjustment and another, and another cementation with zinc. And uh, once I catch all the solids from the two cementations, then I'll uh, try to get the gold out of it. It's just more efficient to do it that way rather than to try and process each individual cementation. You just, just do them all together. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, well, it is the next day. And this stuff's been sitting here. I actually stirred it up a little bit earlier this morning because uh, it was still pretty gassy. I wanted to try and get the gas bubbles out of it as much as possible. I uh, don't know if I succeeded. It still looks pretty gassy. That's one problem with this stuff. It tends to be gassy. Let's get a pH reading on it. Oh, look at that. We're right about at 6. Maybe a little below 6. six and three, five and three quarters maybe. Five and a half. I don't know. Um, so that's right about where uh, the instructions say we should be. So I guess I put enough zinc in. I think I mentioned earlier, if you don't put enough zinc in, you won't uh, see the pH rise up the way uh, they expect it to. So that's one way to tell if you put enough zinc in. Okay, so... Now, if you've been using zinc strips instead of zinc powder like I used, you shouldn't have to filter this. You just pull the strips out and go to the next step. But uh, the instructions do say if you've been using zinc powder, you need to filter this. So I've got the same filter set up I had before. I'm going to siphon all this stuff into my Buckner funnel and then vacuum filter it into the filter flask. And again, we'll have to do it in several batches because there's too much liquid here to fit in my 2 liter flask. In fact, after all the acid, dilute acid I've added, there's probably close to another liter here that, that, that wasn't there before. So. Uh, Got to do that, and then once we do that, we can put it back in here, and we can do another cementation and get some more gold out of it. Uh, according to the instructions, the first cementation will likely get you 45 to 55 percent of the gold. The second one, maybe another, I don't know, 40 percent of it. So they say they recommend three cementations to get the bulk of the gold out. I'll talk more about that later, but first we got to do the second cementation. But before that, we got to filter this. So let me move the camera and we'll commence the filtering. As I feared, the filtration is going very slowly. Siphoning just wasn't working. Um, because it was coming into the Buckner funnel faster than it could go through the filter. So I've taken to using one of my smaller beakers to just dip liquid into the into the funnel as needed. Um, but the, the filtrate is coming through very, very clear and clean. And there's some dark stuff in the funnel. Let me show you that. That dark stuff... Probably gold. Hope it's so anyway. Haven't even got to the bottom of the pot yet where most of the gold should be, so 
I'm sure some of it's zinc, but some of it should be gold. So this is just going to take a while. Um, the flask down there is filling up, so once it's full, I'll have to dump that out into my intermediary bucket and then uh, filter some more. Well, the filtering is going painfully slowly. Uh, this is going to be the last uh, beaker full, though. Down to the nitty gritty in here. Uh, one problem I've had in the past that I'm having this time is that the uh, the cement gold, which let me see if I can get you a close up on it here. The areas where the zinc has turned black should be cement gold. It's especially strong in here. Sticks pretty badly to the uh, stainless steel pan. What I'm going to have to do is probably just scrub this out with a paper towel and throw the paper towel in with the filter down here. And uh, so when I process the filter, I'll process the paper towel with the gold in it too. And another interesting thing, I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera. I, I've known for a while that Eco Gold X will also leak some copper out of things. Well, pretty clearly, some of the copper has cemented out on the sides of my pot. So, uh, yeah. So this is going to be contaminated with copper. A lot of my previous experimentation has been done in plastic buckets where I didn't have this, this problem. And uh, you, the way you could make this work in a plastic bucket, especially with the old formula where you had to heat it up, was you'd use a uh, immersion heater in the bucket to warm up the liquid. So. Uh, I don't really even need to be using the stainless steel pot. I'll probably go back to plastic buckets in the future, though. So anyway, I'm going to have to get uh, the rest of this little bit of liquid down in the bottom of this thing into the Buckner funnel and then scrub out the gold in there before I uh, dump the clean liquid back in so we can do a second cementation. Okay, I got the bottom of the pot clean, got all the cement gold that was stuck on it, uh, and zinc that was stuck on it off. And I've had this problem before with the, the zinc and cement gold sticking hard to the bottom of whatever vessel I'm using. And it doesn't really matter if it's stainless steel, plastic, or a glass beaker. It will stick hard to the bottom. Um, so, what I had to do was scrub it with a piece of paper towel, a couple pieces of paper towel actually. In fact, I had to resort to using a little bit of my dilute sulfuric acid mixture to break the bond of the zinc with the bottom. And then it all came right off pretty easy. Uh, this beaker right here contains the paper towels I was using. See all that black stuff? That's all cement gold. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set it aside for now. And once this filtration is done running, I'm going to add the contents of that beaker to what's in this filter right here. And uh, we'll set that aside for processing. Now I'm not going to process this right now. I'm going to wait until after we do the second cementation, filter all the cement gold out on it, and then I'll do those, I'll process the results of those two cementations together. That's just for purposes of economy and efficiency and time saving rather than processing each one separately. So this is almost done. Just got a little bit more filtration to do. And then uh, we'll be ready to do the next cementation. Okay, finally it's all filtered. The liquid is back in the pot. Over here I've got the uh, remains of the zinc and the cement gold. Now, that is not all zinc and cement gold. I swear those cracks are a quarter inch deep. There's a lot of material in this filter. And this is something that happens every time I use Eco Gold X. The first cementation produces all that white precipitate, which I'm increasingly believing is an insoluble salt of silver. So, um, and then of course we've got the zinc and the cement gold in there too. Now, it's that white precipitate seems to be mostly be a problem during the first cementation. Subsequent cementations, you don't see much of it, because I guess because it all comes out the first time. We'll see if it happens that way this time, or if things are going to change up just because I'm filming and uh, give me an agita here. We'll see. All right, let me move the camera and get set up. We've got to uh, we've got to bring the pH of this stuff back down 
and then do a second cementation on it. We're going to adjust the pH on this again. We're not starting as high as we were before. We're not starting with something that's north of 10. We're starting with something that's 6 or a little below. So I've got a little bit of my sulfuric, to my 20% sulfuric acid solution left here. And we'll see. I'm going to put it in slowly because usually at this stage it doesn't take much acid to bring the pH of the solution back down. Okay. Okay, let me uh, stir this up pretty good and we'll measure it and see what we've got. So we were starting out five and three quarters to six, I would guess. Let's see where we are now. Not near as much foaming as before, and none of that nasty white precipitate is forming. So it's behaving as I expected. That's good. Sometimes when I start filming, all kinds of strange stuff happens. Oh, that's pretty good. I would say that's three or maybe a little bit closer to two. Three and a, two and a half maybe? Somewhere between two and a half and three possibly? So I would say we're there. That didn't take much acid at all. Okay, so let me get the zinc ready and we'll do another cementation. So just like last time, I'm going to put about 30 grams of zinc in here and stir it in. What in the world happened to my stir bar? There it is. <coughs> Got to have that handy. Okay. Get this second cementation under the way. And here comes the foam. Not as bad as the first time around, I don't think, but uh, definitely got a reaction going on. That's good. Okay. We'll just let that go. Once the foam head dies down some, I'll stir it up some more just to make sure there's no lumps or clumps of zinc in there and it all gets a chance to uh, contact the liquid and cement out some gold. And then uh, we'll just let it sit again, um, probably again until tomorrow morning, just because it's, it's not that late in the afternoon yet, but by the time this has had a few hours to settle, it will be, so. Okay, so here we are the next day. Um, the, quite a difference with this uh, second uh, cementation. Just, you know, piles of zinc and cemented gold on the bottom of the, of the relatively clear liquid. That's nice. All of that white, nasty precipitate comes out in the first cementation. Pretty sure it's silver sulfate. Alright, so what I'm going to do is something similar to last time. I'm going to siphon the bulk of the liquid off, but I'm not going to bother filtering it. I'm just going to siphon it into a bucket. And then once I get down to the bottom where all the gold is, um, I will uh, get that into a filter. So let me get set up and we'll get that done. Siphoning again. You've seen this a few times before. Just going to siphon the bulk of this liquid off. Then uh, set up the filtration setup and uh, get, the, get the sludge out of the bottom that contains the gold. So I probably won't show too much of this. Because this video is getting pretty long. So this is what's left in there after siphoning off the bulk of the liquid and I just have to say I'm liking the color of it. Black is the color of cement gold. So that's that's good. I'm liking the color of it. So I'll get set up to filter out uh, the gold from what little liquid is left in here. As for this liquid here, well it's kind of confusing in Eco Goldex's um, instructions about just how much gold you get out with each cementation. Now they're saying the first cementation gets out 45 to 55 percent. Okay. Then they say the second cementation gets out maybe 45 percent. 
Now, then they say it may take three to four cementations to get out all the gold. So I'm thinking we're talking maybe 50, between 45, 55 percent of the gold in the solution with each cementation comes out. So, you know, a little quick calculation shows you you're just going to have to do a lot of cementations to get all of the gold out if that's the way it is. But you got diminishing returns. I think we got most of the gold out in the first and second cementations. And with my experience, the third one, the fourth one, you're not really getting enough gold out to make it worth the effort. But that doesn't mean I'm going to throw this away. No. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this liquid accumulate. So this is the liquid left over from, you know, one run of an Eco Goldex. I'll dump this in a five gallon bucket. And then this next run, I'll dump the liquid after, you know, two cementations into a five gallon bucket. And after the third run, I'll dump the liquid after two cementations into the same five gallon bucket. Pretty soon I've got mostly full five gallon bucket of liquid that's had two cementations out of it. Now, with that much liquid, it's starting to be, you're starting to get a reasonable amount of gold out of it when you do further cementations. Not going to get very much gold out of this, this, you know, gallon and a half of liquid down here. But five gallons? Eh, it starts to become worth it. So we'll talk about more about that later, maybe. Right now, i got to get set up for filtration. All right got the uh, filtration set up ready to go. I've got enough of the liquid out of this that I can uh, handle it easy and carefully pour the rest in. So. And it looks like we had the same problem as before, which I expected. Got a lot of stuff stuck to the bottom of the pan. Yeah, the spray bottle gets some of it loose, but I'm going to have to scrub it again, at least a little bit. Get the rest of it out. But I do like this color. It's good and black. The zinc went in gray. All this stuff stuck to the bottom of the pot is black. We think there's a lot of cement gold there, so I'm going to have to scrub that stuff out. Scrub around the sides, too. I can see a film of black on the sides. So let me get some paper towel and scrub it. Here's the beaker with the filter and the paper towel from last time. I'll just add the paper towel to it and I'll add this filter to this beaker too. Once it finishes draining. Okay, pot's clean. Paper towel's in the beaker. There's all the cement gold and probably a lot of unreacted zinc still in this filter. This can go in here. And uh, this liquid here I'll pour in the bucket with the rest of it here in a minute. And then we are ready for the next step in the operation finally, which is going to happen in the fume hood. Let me set everything back up and be right back. So, I've put the uh, beaker with all of the filters, with all of the zinc and cement gold and who knows what else, into the fume hood. Let me start up the fan. And here I have some more of that 20% uh, sulfuric acid solution that I was using to change the pH of the Eco Gold X solution. And I'm just going to pour this over this stuff. The purpose of this is to dissolve any remaining zinc metal in this stuff. Yeah, so we got some we got some pretty fierce bubbling going on. The zinc's getting uh, dissolved by the sulfuric acid. Now Eco Goldex says you can use uh, muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid for this. But we've been using sulfuric all this time, might as well stick with it till the end, till we're ready to make aqua regia. Then we'll get the uh, muriatic acid out. So I'm just going to let this sit here for a while and let the acid do its thing and digest the rest of the zinc in there that uh, was not used up in the cementation. So we can get rid of it. Well, it's been a little while. I've been stirring it. 
and uh, the paper's starting to fall apart a little bit, but there's a lot of paper in here. There's several filters, there's a lot of paper towel, and now there's a lot of uh, acidic liquid full of uh, zinc salts and uh, who knows what else. That white precipitate from uh, that came out of the first cementation and any of the strange Eco Goldex chemicals left over in there. So what I'm going to do now that I think all the zinc is used up, because I'm not really seeing any more bubbling, I'm going to pour this back into my big filter fl um, filter funnel. Again, going to filter it, and I'm going to capture because I want to capture all this lovely black stuff because this black stuff is the gold. Any other precious metals present. So I'm going to have to capture that along with all the paper pulp and suck as much of that liquid out of it as I can. I'll spritz it with some distilled water and try to flush out any more of the waste liquid that I can. Then I'll take the filter out, put it back in the beaker, and we'll be ready for aqua regia. Alright, let me get the pump running. There's a lot of filtration involved with this, at least the way I do it. There may be ways to streamline things. Just don't cut too many corners. Yeah, I gotta get all this paper pulp in here. The yeah, liquid's coming off clear, that's good. All this stuff into the funnel, it's in the beaker. I'll have to get some more out of there, but we're almost full up to the top of the filter, so I'll have to wait a little bit. But yeah, the liquid's coming off nice and clear. Now, I'm not going to mix this with the other liquid. I'm going to put this in my uh, acid waste bucket. It's still going to be quite acidic. Um, it's probably not going to have any gold in it and it's going to have a variety of metal salts in it that I don't want to mix with the uh, liquid that I cut off the Eco Goldex. So, I'll put this in my acid waste bucket. Alright, this is going to take a little while. I'll be back when it's done and we're ready for Aqua Region. Okay, left the vacuum going for a good long time, pulled a lot of liquid out of this. I spritzed some uh, distilled water on it and let it go some more and let the vacuum pull that water through and pull more impurities out of it. So mostly what should be left in here, hopefully, is uh, cement gold, whatever that white precipitate was, which is, I think is an insoluble silver salt, and paper pulp. There's probably some other stuff too, but you know, trying to get rid of the most of the impurities that I can. Okay, so this needs to go back in this beaker over here. And with this filter down here too. I double up my filters in my Buckner funnel usually because the holes in the Buckner funnel are really big. And a lot of times the vacuum will just suck one or two holes right through the once a single filter but if I double it up it's fine okay so this needs to go into the fume hood again we're gonna make some aqua regia we're gonna dissolve the gold in here paper pulp should all fall apart and uh, then one more filtration and we should be able to drop our gold okay here we go we're finally to the stage of making some aqua regia Okay, we've got some muriatic acid here. Now, let's see if there's enough in this. I'm going to put a fair amount in here because there's a lot of paper pulp to dissolve. Let's see. What's that come out to? That's about 800 milliliters. You know, I may bust out another jug of this stuff and make it an even thousand just because there's so much paper pulp and stuff in there. Yeah, it looks like Chemtech has changed the packaging through their muriatic acid. 
do these milk jug type things. All right, so there's a thousand milliliters muriatic acid. Let me get some nitric on it. I'm going to put a fair amount in. If I have to denox it, that's fine. I just want to make sure that the paper pulp all falls apart, as well as the gold all going into solution. And there's about four, four and a quarter milliliters. It's about eight and a half, maybe. That's probably a little over 10 right there. We'll start with that. I can add more. We get the hot plate turned on. Things heating up. And we'll see how this goes. Give it a few minutes and I'll give you a look at it. Well, it's taken a little while for it to warm up, but we got some uh, got some fuming and some bubbling going on. I'm gonna give it a stir. Oh yeah, the paper pulp is starting to break up. Oh yeah, look at all the foam that's coming out now that I've broken up the paper some and let all the little bubbles of nitrogen dioxide gas out. Okay, that's coming along nicely. The color's lightening up. Uh, the cement gold and whatever else was in there is going into solution. So, uh, just going to let it cook for a while. And uh, once it looks like there's no more reaction, I'll swirl it around and see if I see any gold on the bottom of the, uh, of the beaker. If so, I'll add more nitric. If not, I won't bother. All right, it's been, I don't know, better part of an hour. The reaction's pretty much died down. I've swirled this around a few times. Looked at the bottom of it. I don't see any gold left in here. There don't seem to be any solids left in it. So, I turned the power, uh, I turned the heat off. Time to denox it. Since all the gold disappeared, I probably have an excess of nitric acid in there. So I've got my usual saturated solution of sulfamic acid here. Yeah, it's a little overnoxed. Let that settle down and hit it with some more. Yeah, you got to be careful with the sulfamic acid denoxing when there's this much paper pulp in the liquid because it really will bubble up on you and the paper pulp makes the foam makes the foam really come up, you know. You put just a little bit more in. Not quite so vigorous a reaction that time. That's good. I'll let the foam die down and just, just keep adding the sulfamic acid in increments until I don't see a reaction anymore. Then I'll call it denoxed. Okay, this stuff is thoroughly denoxed. Turned a little green. I suspect there's a bit of copper contamination. It does look like Eco Gold X strips copper as well as gold, silver, other precious metals. Anyway, I almost forgot a step. We're not quite ready to filter yet. Some of you were probably yelling at your monitors. Don't forget the ice. Yeah. I'll put the ice in there, let it uh, melt, cool down, and dilute this. Um, 
that'll get anything like uh, lead sulfate, um, silver chloride, anything else that's in the solution that wants to drop out of solution will come out as soon as it's diluted and cooled. So we can catch it on the filter. One more filtration and then we can drop the gold after this long process. My goodness, it's been a process, hasn't it? So let me get the filtration set up ready while this is melting and then we'll get it filtered and we'll get some SMB on it and get that gold dropping before the end of the day today. Finally. Okay, the ice has finally melted. So it's time to filter this stuff one last time. Now this may take a little while because there's a lot of paper pulp in here and whatever that weird white precipitate was. So I expect the filter will clog up and this will go fairly slow. So yeah, it's going pretty slow. And obviously, the liquid's still pretty gassy. Got all that foam down there. Probably from uh, when I denoxed it with the sulfamic acid, it produces nitrogen. Nitrous oxide is a byproduct. So, nitrous oxide coming out of solution in a partial vacuum in the receiving flask there. Alright, well, I'll just continue to filter this. This is going to take a while. You don't have to watch it all. Be back when it's done. Oh, isn't the, green, isn't the liquid green too down there? Oh my. So, yeah, we got some copper contamination. So, this first gold drop out of this probably not going to be particularly clean but hopefully we'll get a decent amount of gold out of it anyway I'll be back when the filtration is done well the filtration is pretty much done I'm gonna I've, I've also rinsed this really well but there's a lot of paper pulp in that filter so it takes a long time to pull the liquid through but it's starting to dry out starting to crack around the edges I'm going to let it go for a little while longer, pull some more liquid out of it. Just because there's so much pulp there, I'm sure I didn't get all of the pregnant solution out of it, but the vacuum will pull it out over time and dry this out. And then I will store this filter with all this paper pulp in it in with my gold filters. Because I'm sure there'll still be a little bit of gold in there. And I'll get it all back when I process my filters. You know, that's kind of my motto, nothing goes to waste save these filters, get the gold back out of them that's stuck in them. So, as soon as this is done dripping, and this looks good and dry, I'll uh, pour the liquid out into a beaker, we'll put some SMB to it, and see how much gold we can get out of it. At last, it's time to see how much gold we can get out of this lime green Kool-Aid looking stuff. Ooh, nasty. This is one time, though, you do not want to drink the Kool-Aid, okay? Now, let me get the fume hood going. Got the usual stump out here by Boneed with the uh, SMB in it, sodium metabisulfite. Oops, making a mess. Wanting to float on the surface and get foamy, so I'll just let that uh, let that do its thing for now. We'll see if it needs more. It might need more. Give it a good stir, and we'll just wait and see what happens. Well, it's been a few minutes and nothing much is happening, so I'm going to add some more SMB to it. I thought I got it denoxed really well, but maybe not. We are making white foam, which is generally a good sign, but we're not getting any uh, gold precipitation.
let's see what that does. Fair amount of SMB in there now. I'll just let that go for a while. Well, it's been a few more minutes and the liquid has darkened significantly, so I'm taking that as a sign that the gold's starting to come out of solution. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to have to run an errand here in a little bit. And by the time I get back, it'll probably be fairly late in the afternoon. Just going to leave it and see what happens. May even end up leaving it until tomorrow morning. Well, this has been kind of a strange gold drop. Um, it's been a few hours. Went away, did my errand, came back. Um, you know, this it was slow to get started. Nothing happened for a while. I added some more SMB and it started darkening up and I could see a film of gold forming on the bottom of the beaker. But before I left, I thought, boy, that's not very much gold at all. I don't know what's going on here. And it looked like it was clearing up and no more gold was coming out of solution. But after when I got back, the solution's all cloudy again. And uh, there's a much thicker layer on the bottom and I haven't done anything to it. So just kind of an odd gold drop. I'm going to leave this because it's still very cloudy so there's there's a lot of stuff suspended in there that needs to drop out of solution. I got a feeling the gold's going to be very fine and probably contaminated with um, hmm, could be lots of things. Obviously copper but there could also be uh, PGM's galore in there so uh, we'll see what we get in the morning what it looks like and uh, what the consistency is and whether I can clean it up or whether I'll have to uh, catch it all on a filter and re-refine it. We'll see. Well, it's the next morning. It's actually the first cool morning of autumn. It's, it's actually kind of chilly out here a little bit with a heck of a breeze blowing. Alright, so the gold is really fine. It wasn't settling very well. I stirred this stuff vigorously a couple of times last night before going to bed just to see if I could break up whatever uh, stratification, density stratifications were going on in there and get the gold to settle out. It is mostly settled. There's a, there's a good layer on the bottom of the beaker, which really isn't showing up here. Um, but it's still cloudy, so there's still some fine stuff in there. Interestingly, it's turned brown overnight, although it's still got a layer of green stuff at the top but this is some very fine gold this is kind of what I was expecting because uh, when you're dealing with eco gold X and you finally drop the gold out it's a very dirty gold drop there was a lot of contamination there so it's dirty gold dirty gold is wants to be fine gold it doesn't want to agglomerate together it doesn't want to settle so, as usual, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to capture all this on a filter and re-refine it. So, I will uh, get set up for that. And hopefully, the second gold drop will be a lot cleaner. We'll get some, some good, clean gold to drop out that will settle nicely and agglomerate together. And then we can uh, clean it up and get a weight on it. That would be nice. Then I can uh, finish up this video. Okay, so I'm just going to gravity filter this stuff this morning. It's going to take a while, but that's okay. I've got the time, and the power is going to be out to my lab bench here for a while, so I can't run the vacuum pump. So we'll just do a do an old school gravity filtration and capture all the gold on this filter, and then we'll uh, re-refine it and see if we can get it cleaner. So as I said, this is going to take quite a while. Um, I won't make you watch it all. In fact, I'm not going to watch it all. I'm going to go work on other stuff while this is draining and then come back periodically and just dump some more liquid in. Be back when it's done. <clears throat> okay, I've got it pretty much the liquid drained off. It's a nice little uh, pile of gold down the bottom corner of the beaker. How much is it? Always hard to tell when it's wet. But I'm not even going to bother with trying to uh, trying to clean this up and uh, weigh it. I'm just going to dump it into the filter with uh, everything else that's gone before, and uh, we'll re-refine this stuff. Yeah, because there's some fine stuff suspended in the water column that's caught on the filter now. 
get all the gold out of here. And I will uh, wash this gold in this filter with some uh, distilled water and uh, some muriatic acid. And then we will re-refine it. Man, there's some fine stuff in there that's sticking to the sides of the beaker. I'll have to wipe that out with a piece of paper towel. I don't want to leave any gold behind. Okay, so, like I said, I'll, I'll wash this down with some uh, distilled water. I'll probably wash it down with a little muriatic acid. I'm going to have to empty this into my stock pot. And, uh, then once I'm done with all the washings, we'll get this into a beaker and we will uh, re-refine it. Alright, I've got the filter in here after washing the gold very thoroughly with uh, um, distilled water first, then um, muriatic acid, and then more distilled water. The filter looks pretty clean. I think I've washed all the strange color out of it. Uh, speaking of strange color, I am not liking the color of this Chemtech muriatic acid. Two jugs of it came in a cardboard box. If I could have seen the color, I wouldn't have bought it probably. And I'm trying to purify the gold here, not add more impurities to it. I guess I'm going to have to change brands of acid again. Okay, I'm not going to need nearly as much acid this time. About 450 milliliters, I guess. There's not nearly as much paper pulp there. Okay, and let me get some uh, nitric acid on it. And we'll get this gold dissolving again. And hopefully, we've gotten rid of a lot of the impurities. Um, I strongly suspect, I mean, there was obviously copper there. There's probably platinum group metals. Okay, that's a little over six milliliters. I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment. And we'll see how this goes. Yeah, so there's copper, there's probably platinum group metals. But I suspect the main culprit in preventing this gold from coming down nicely is tin. All that stuff I ran through the Eco Goldex is coated with tin, tin solder. And Eco Goldex in its literature proudly proclaims it recovers tin too. So I'm pretty sure there was a lot of tin contamination there and that was what was preventing the gold from coming down nicely, dropping nicely, um, getting a good gold drop. Um, it's the same process that happens with the stannous chloride test where if you add uh, stannous chloride to a solution with gold you wind up with a, a, a micro-fine suspension, emulsion even, of gold particles. They're so micro-fine. And that's, I think, is what is happening when you, we've got tin contamination. The gold just comes out of solution so fine, it doesn't want to settle, it doesn't want to agglomerate. Um, so hopefully we've gotten rid of the tin contamination, if that's what was causing it. And uh, we'll get a nice, good gold drop this time. And speaking of the stannous chloride test, we need to talk more about that. I can't get the stannous chloride test to work with Eco Goldex, even though their uh, instructions say it does. I wanted to go into that earlier. I'll probably talk about it towards the end more. So uh, let's just see if we can get a decent gold drop out of this now and weigh up what we got. Okay, we're starting to get a pretty good reaction. The, uh, the paper pulp from the filter is falling apart. We get some foaming, some fuming, the liquid's turning color, gold's going back into solution, and uh, it's a much better looking solution. It's not green, so uh, we'll just let this cook until it's done, and then uh, same as before, I will uh, denox it, I'll ice it, filter it, and we'll drop the gold again. And it's early enough in the day, we should get that all done today, hopefully. All right, that's a nice color. That's a nice color. I mean, the paper pulp's all falling apart. I've swirled it around and looked at the bottom. I don't see any gold left in there, so. It appears to have all gone into solution. Got my usual 
saturated solution of sulfamic acid here. I'm going to pour it in very slowly. A little bit of bubbling, but not too bad. I guess I must have got the, uh, the nitric acid pretty, pretty close to right this time. Just enough to dissolve the gold, not a lot of extra. Good. Put a little more in just to be on the safe side. And I gotta go get some ice. We'll ice it down, cool it off, and then filter it. Okay, let me uh, take this off of the hot plate. I turned it off a while ago, but it's still quite warm. We don't need the heat right now because it's time to ice it down and cool it off. Okay, we'll let that ice melt and I will set up the filtration apparatus. Alrighty, let's get this stuff filtered. So we get the gold dropping again. See what it looks like this time. I think it's going to be much better. This is a really nice color liquid right here. And I suspect once the paper pulp's filtered out of it, it'll be nice and clear liquid, too. So I'll filter it all through here. And put it in a clean beaker. And we'll drop the gold one more time and see, see what we get this time. Right. Filtered. Back in a beaker. That is a gorgeous colored liquid right there. I think we're going to have a much better gold drop this time. Get some good clean gold out of it. Be able to weigh it up. And finally put this video to bed. In goes the SMB. Oh yeah. Oh look at that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's darkening down there at the bottom of the flask already. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that color change. Strange oscillating chemical reaction going on down there. Look at that. That fast. That's nice. Still looking a little yellow at the top. I'm going to put some more in. Yeah, we're only starting to get the white foam, so... Okay, I'd say that's probably enough. We will just let this sit and see what happens. Well, it's been a couple of hours. I've busied myself on mowing some of the acreage here around the farm. Um, most of the gold looks like it's dropped right out of solution. The solution is much clearer and cleaner looking than last time, though not perfectly clear. I guess we've still got some of the stuff carried over. Looks like maybe a little bit of a green color to it, so a little bit of copper, a little bit of who knows what else in there. But much cleaner than last time. The gold has dropped out much quicker than last time. That's going to be much better gold. Um, I think I'm going to leave it till tomorrow morning and then deal with it so I can get some more mowing in before it gets too late. Uh, I basically just stopped to uh, gas up the mower and check on this. So. Uh, looking good though, looking good. So maybe tomorrow I can get it cleaned up and we can get a weight on it. Well, it's the next morning. Um, the gold has settled out nicely. The liquid is nice and clear, except for a slight yellow-green color to it. It's very clear. So it's time to uh, see if I can uh, clean this up. So I'm going to decant off the bulk of the liquid carefully into my uh, temporary stock pot. I may actually siphon it just because less chance of roiling up the gold on the bottom of the uh, of the beaker there. And then uh, 
We'll clean up the gold a little bit, give it a couple of boils in distilled water, and see if we can get it to agglomerate together nice, and uh, see if we can dry it out and weigh it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon the bulk of this liquid off into my temporary stock pot. Now, a couple of weird things going on with the temporary stock pot here. This has got the liquid in it from the first gold drop. This was empty. I had cleaned this out. So all the liquid in here is from the first gold drop. Let me see if I can give you a close-up of it. It has re-stratified again. Brown at the bottom, green at the top, just like it was when it was in the beaker. And there's also a light film of gold on the bottom of it. So more gold has come out of solution while it's sitting in there. That's the purpose of my temporary stock pot. I'll put my liquids in there after I drop gold, the remaining liquid, and just let it sit here for a while until it's full. And then, you know, I'll empty it into my uh, main stock pot, but I'll capture any remaining gold that comes out of solution. And usually there is a little bit. And in this case, again, there's a little bit. It's a light film. It's not a lot. So, uh, this is kind of interesting that it's re-stratified. Because it was all thoroughly mixed when it went in there, of course. So, uh, let me get to siphoning. Get that done. Then we can uh, clean up this gold and maybe finally get a weight on it. That'd be nice. Move on to other projects. Maybe mix up some more Eco Gold decks and uh, run some more stuff through. Because I, even though I did maybe 30 pounds of it, I don't know, maybe even 35 pounds, I've got a lot more that needs done. So, uh, I won't film it though. Projects like this take just way too long when you've got to film it and explain it. You gotta get the lighting right. If you're just gonna do it, it takes time. So don't think if you're using Eco Gold Dex that it's gonna take you a week or two weeks to run a load of stuff through it, like it's taken me to make this video. No, if you're just doing it, it's a lot quicker. If you're trying to film it and explain it and edit the footage, then it takes a long time. So I could probably mix up two or three batches of Eco Gold X and run the rest of my junk through it in the time it took me to make this one video. Anyway, I will speed this up. There we go. Alright, I probably sucked over a little bit of gold, but not much. And it's a lot easier to get out of the bottom of this temporary stock pot than out of the bottom of my main stock pot. So I'll uh, clean this out periodically. Okay. All right, let me get to cleaning this up. Gonna uh, boy, it's really hard to tell how much gold's in there. I hope there's more than it looks like. So I'm gonna transfer this to a smaller beaker, give it some distilled water boils, and see how it looks. Okay, got a good rolling boil going in there. Um, probably gonna let that go for a little while. Change the water once or twice. You know, bring it back up to a boil each time. Get the gold, you know, get as much stuff cleaned out of the gold as I can. Hopefully get it to agglomerate together better. Although it's looking pretty good right now. It's not, not all distributed through the water column. I can see to the bottom. That's good. But get it all to agglomerate together as much as possible. Get it as clean as possible. Then I'll dry it out and weigh it up. Okay, gold is rinsed. It's drying out. It's still pretty fine. So it, uh, it didn't agglomerate all that well. I'll show you a little trick I use. When I drain the, uh, the, the rinse water that I boil the gold in, I always drain it through a filter to catch any little fine gold caught in the water column. And we got a little bit of gold there. Not a huge amount, probably not even enough to move the scale at all, but uh, 
at least I caught it. It's not going to waste. And uh, we'll get this stuff in the fuel hood dried out and weighed up and see how much we got. Okay, I got a gold here. It's all dried out. It's uh, it's pretty fine. It's pretty fine. There's a lot of it stuck to the inside of the beaker. Um, not as clean as I would have liked yet, but uh, I was able to uh, get it dried out, and I think we can get a weight on it now. Get the scale fired up. Ah, it's a little disappointing. A little disappointing. It didn't look like all that much in the beaker. There's some fine stuff in there. I'm going to have to wipe out the inside of this beaker and keep the paper towel. Because there is some fine stuff in there. Okay, so about 3.58 grams. A lot of work for not that much gold. But I think I know what the problem is. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the issues here that uh, probably could have caused this low yield. I don't know if that's showing up on the screen or not. Huh, it's really not showing up on the screen very well, but it's 3.58 grams. All right, let me reposition the camera. We'll talk about this. So, I know what you're thinking. That's not a lot of gold. And you're right, it's not. Where's the rest of the gold? Well, there's a little bit in the stock pot, my temporary stock pot back here. It's forming a very, very, very light film on the bottom. So there's not a lot of gold there, but there's some. There's a little bit in this funnel where I poured the uh, rinse water where I was cleaning up the gold through. Not much. I don't know, hundredth of a gram, maybe. So again, not much. Now there's maybe 10% of the gold we started with left in this liquid after only two uh, cementations. I figure there's at least 10% of the gold left in there. Still, 10%, that's, that's not much. Then there's this stainless steel pot I used. Um, I should not have changed up at the last minute. I should have used my plastic buckets like I normally do. So it looks like there's copper plating in here. I'm assuming it's copper. At least some of it could be gold. But even that's not going to account for much of the gold. I mean, you know, a tenth of a gram of gold will plate a lot of metal. What I might do is swish some um, aqua regia in here and dissolve that off and see just what it is. Might do that in the future, just for uh, just for my own uh, curiosity. Oh, here's a little addendum. News from the future breaking into this video. It's a strange quantum phenomenon. I mixed up my next batch of Eco Goldex in this uh, pot, but decided I was going to work out of this bucket down here for dipping. But I mixed it up in this pot because I could put it on the hot plate and heat it up. Didn't have to use my immersion heaters. Look what happened. It took all that interior plating off. So my pot's clean again. All right, that problem solved. I think the really inescapable conclusion here is that the gold was not present in the material I ran through the Eco Gold X. It's really low grade stuff. Now in the past I said that I get between 0.8 and 0.1 gram per liter of, of uh, Eco Gold X. But that's really what I'm running higher grade stuff through it. The stuff I ran through it this time was pretty low grade. A lot of those connectors, really thin gold plating on them, and not much of it. So it's pretty low grade stuff. And, you know, I'm not a cheerleader for Eagle Gold X. I don't get any money out of it if you buy from them, you know, or don't buy from them. It makes no difference to me. So I'll give you the straight story, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. Um, my favorite movie, by the way. And part of the ugly is, if you're running low-grade stuff through Eco Gold X, it's going to use its stripping power on other metals other than the gold. Uh, it's going to attack the copper. It's going to attack the tin. So that's, I think, what happened in this case. 
I was running a lot of stuff through it. You know, good, probably 35 pounds of stuff maybe. But it's low grade and it probably stripped that gold off real quick and then it started attacking the copper underneath and the tin underneath and, you know, loaded itself down with those base metals so by the time it was done it wouldn't strip any more gold off of it. Um, a lot, probably about half of its stripping power went towards stripping off base metals rather than just gold. So yeah, I think that's about, I think that's why I got about, you know, a little more than half of the yield that I have seen in the past when I'm working with higher grade stuff where it strips the gold and not a lot of the base metals. Um, I get people, you know, emailing me and making comments in the videos and they talk about, they get about the same, um, the same yield with high grade stuff, maybe close to a gram a, a liter of uh, Eco Gold X. But uh, with the lower grade stuff, not so much and a whole lot of copper contamination. You know, we had a lot of copper contamination this time and I was kind of expecting it because I knew I was running low grade stuff through it and I've seen it before. So, uh, yeah, that happens. Um, possible improvements to increase yield even with the low grade stuff. Maybe if I had been more Johnny on the spot when I was dipping the stuff and if I pulled it out sooner once I thought all of the gold was probably gone or most of the gold was gone, you know, at the risk of maybe leaving a little behind on the parts if I would pulled the basket out sooner and not let the Eco Gold X chew down into the copper and the tin and the other base metals in there. That would possibly help a little bit. I'm always doing two or three different things and maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention to it a few times and I left the basket in way too long. So that's, that's a possibility. That could, that could improve things, I'm thinking. And um, I think I'm going to mix up another batch and I will, I will try that. I will experiment with not leaving the basket in quite so long. As soon as I think that the most of the gold is gone, out is going to come. And we'll see if that improves things and I get less copper contamination and uh, less other stuff. Haven't tried um, adjusting the pH with nitric acid. Now the instructions say that I should use sulfuric acid or muriatic acid. But I wonder what would happen if I used nitric acid instead. Would I still get that white precipitate which is probably an insoluble, uh, insoluble silver compound? Would I still get that? Would there be other problems? Would the nitric acid uh, interact badly with the other chemicals in there? Who knows? I might try that on a small scale rather than you know ruin a whole big batch of a gallon and a half of it. I might, you know, set aside a little bit of material and try that and see. Maybe I can actually recover some silver too, as well as the gold and uh, whatever other platinum group metals are contaminating the gold I just got out of it. Because I could still tell there's still some kind of contamination in it. Probably platinum group metals. Um, that'll have to be re-refined in the future again and what I'll do is I'll use a more selective uh, precipitating agent not SMB I'll use something like copperus which will just precipitate out the gold and will leave the platinum group metals behind in solution so uh, if anybody out there in my audience can think of other ways to possibly improve efficiency of this process hey hit me up with a comment email me you can find my email on my blog mdpub.com um, let me know what you think. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Well, there is one other bit of information I want to share with you. Um, can't get the uh, can't get the uh, stannous chloride test to work with this stuff. The, the Eco Gold X instructions say it'll work. No, nah, it doesn't work. I uh, I tried it off camera, and it didn't work. It's never worked. Um, I don't know why. Even even the original solution when it was still loaded with gold no indication at all with stannous chloride that there was any gold in it. So, uh, don't know why it doesn't work. Don't know why they say it works when it doesn't. So keep that in mind. Was it worth it? Well, it's, you know, that's another, that's another question. I get a lot in emails and video comments. People ask me, is it worth it? Is the Eco Gold X worth it? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a calculation every single person out there has to make for themselves. Um, now, 
you know, I ran maybe 35 pounds of stuff through it. If I'm lucky, my scrap yard may have paid me a dollar a pound for that stuff. If I wasn't lucky, it may have been closer to 10 cents a pound, or they may have just turned up their noses at it entirely. So, um, you know, we're looking at maybe 30, 35 bucks tops if I take it to the scrap yard. Okay, I got a little over three and a half grams of gold out of it. Um, let's see, at today's gold price of about $57 a gram, that's what, uh, $171? So, did a lot better than I would do at the scrap yard. And I've still got scrap. They may still buy it and I may get a few bucks out of it. Um, so, I didn't use that much in chemicals, um, you know, probably maybe a, a couple bucks worth of sulfuric acid, a few cents worth of uh, muriatic acid, a buck worth of nitric acid, uh, you know, I, th I think I used more distilled water than anything, but that's like a buck a gallon. Um, so I didn't, didn't put much money into it. What went into it was time, and... Um, but of course, I was filming, I was explaining, I'm editing videos, so, you know, it takes me two weeks to do a load when I'm doing all that. But uh, if I'm not doing all that, it's a day or two to run a load through Eco Gold X. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a calculation you have to make yourself. You know, is it, is it worth your time and effort to get this amount of gold out? Um, or just take it to the scrapyard and get a couple... A few, a few quick bucks, you know, it's that's a calculation each and every person has to make themselves. Me, I'm retired, I got nothing but time, so uh, I can work on a project for a couple weeks and make 170 bucks off of it. Okay, I can do that. Um, you know, you're trying to put food on the table for a family of four and you're juggling a, a full time job, you know, maybe it's not worth it to you, you know, but uh, so it works. Um, I don't know of any other way I could have got the gold out of those connectors and uh, other pieces other than using the Eco Gold X. You know, there's, uh, you know, you watch some of the other people who, who handle scrap and uh, Jason at Mount Baker Mining and Metals, I'm, I'm a big fan of his and he has a great channel and what he would do is he would run this stuff through a hammer bill, run it across his shaker table and separate all the all the metal parts out. But then he'd have to get the gold and the silver and other precious metals out of the metal fraction. And, you know, he does smelting. And, you know, that's complicated too. And uh, there's a lot of moving parts to that. There's a lot of expense. There's a lot of... And it's, it's very energy intensive. So, you know, that's a way to go. I'm not sure that it's even as efficient as using the Eco Gold X. You know, if you've got all that equipment already, it's just sitting idle, maybe, but uh, certainly don't buy it just to do this. I think the Eco Gold X would probably be a little more economical. Um, but uh, you got to decide for yourself whether it's worth it or not. I can't think of a better way to get the gold out. Um, I'm going to keep using it. I've got a lot of... Uh, low value stuff to run through it. I'm going to have a lot of copper cop copper problems. Um, you know, I've got some high grade stuff that I'll put through it too, but I'll probably do that in a separate batch. Anyway, like I said, I'm not a cheerleader for this stuff. I'm just here to tell you the way it is straight up, you know, good, the bad, and the ugly of it. The good is I got some gold out of that stuff that I couldn't get otherwise. The bad is it took a long time. The ugly is it wasn't a lot of gold. Okay. So, anyway, that's the much-awaited, much-requested, much much-anticipated Eco Gold Up Scaled Up video. I hope you found this interesting, informative, educational, killed some time during COVID lockdown, whatever. Give the video a uh, thumbs up. Give it a like. Subscribe to see future videos. There will be future videos, lots of future videos on lots of different topics. And I may put out another Eco Gold X video in the future if I come across more useful information. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.